Okay, let's look at the next case, um, which is going to be a critically damped case. Um, so this is what happens when we have repeated real roots. How do we get repeated real roots? We need the thing under the square root to be zero. So gamma over 2m squared minus k over m equals zero. So gamma over 2m equals the root of k over m. Again, all of these constants are positive, so we don't need to worry about um, signs. And we can actually solve for gamma, so this is the damping constant, is uh, 2 times the root of km. Um, so if the damping constant is exactly uh, related to the spring constant and the mass in this way, then we're going to get a critically damped case. Pretty rare. It, it's got to be exactly equal to this, otherwise it won't be. Um, okay, and then what happens? Well, this drops off, so we have a repeated root of negative gamma over 2m, so the solution is going to be C1 e to the negative gamma over 2 mt. And remember, with a repeated root, the second um, instance comes with a t, e to the negative gamma over 2 mt. And that's because when you take derivative, there's some product rule going on, and things cancel, and it's nice. OK, um, that's the solution. Uh, so what does the graph look like? Well, uh, you've got three possibilities for the graph. Really, they're all the same graph. Your graph is going to look something like this. That's the general format. Uh, but sometimes the peak is going to be over here in the negative. So then when you look at the positive part, the graph just looks like this. Then you've got different solution curves that don't intersect. Um, or uh, it could be reflected. So it could go down and then back up. And we get um, the negative part. Or uh, it doesn't have to start here. It could start here and go down and back up. But these are all reflections of this graph because this could have started on the negative side. Okay, so um, how do we know which one of these we get? Well, these ones have a local max or min in the t greater than zero portion. So uh, things we can check to know what the graph looks like, we can check that y prime of t is equal to zero for some t greater than zero. That'll give you one of these. And then we can also check the slope at zero. Uh, notice on the green one and the orange one, the slope at zero is negative, and on the purple one, the slope at zero is positive. So um, those two things will uh, fully determine which of these graphs it is. Um, let's just look at uh, what happens to y prime of t. So y prime equals, we're going to take a derivative. It's going to be a little ugly. Uh, so you get uh, the chain rule. We have e to the same power, but then we have the derivative of the power. So we get another gamma over 2m here, c1 e to the negative gamma over 2mt. And now we have product rule. So we have the derivative of t is 1, and we write the other factor here. And then uh, plus, except it's a minus because we're going to have a chain rule again. So minus gamma over 2m c2, we write t as is. This is the rest of the derivative with the chain rule, 2m t. OK. Um, and then uh, we wanted to set it to 0. So set i prime t equal to 0. Then what happens? Well, we can factor out an e to the negative 2 uh, negative gamma over 2 mt. And that part is never 0, because it's e to some power. That's the theme of this course. So then this other thing must be 0. Negative gamma over 2 m c1 plus c2 minus gamma over 2 m c2 t. And if this other thing must be 0, then we can solve for t. t is going to be um, gamma over 2 m c1 minus c2 over uh, negative. I should have done this the other way. Let's do it the other way. Let's do c2 minus gamma over 2m c1 over gamma over 2m c2. That's just solving a linear equation with very ugly 
coefficients. Um, okay, so uh, C, so when is um, y prime equal to zero? Uh, and especially what values of C1 and C2 make this negative? Well, either we have um, C1 is a lot bigger, this means a lot bigger um, than C2, because gamma over 2m is positive, uh, or C2 uh, is negative. Uh, not both, maybe we'll call this XOR. <laughs> if both are true, then it's positive again. Um, so, uh, yeah, this, this tells you when we have the green curve. It's those cases. Um, okay, and then let's look at y prime of 0. y prime of 0 is, um, so we're going to put 0 into here. Well, this part is, is 1. This part is 0. So it's negative gamma over 2m c1 plus c2. Um, so this is negative when c1 is a lot bigger than c2. Actually, this, this is exactly this numerator here. So actually, here's what happens. Um, we start out positive when c1 is not that much bigger than c2, and maybe c2 is positive. Uh, once we get c1 a lot bigger than c2, but c2 is not negative yet, we go to the green one, because now this is negative, and then this is negative. And then once C2 is also negative, then we end up in the orange one. So those are the three cases.